Good day, one and all. I have something really special to show you guys today. This is a Sony model DSR PD150 DV cam camcorder from 2003. And this is mine. Uh, this belonged to the television station and it was retired just a few days ago and I got to take it home and keep it. This thing served an interesting life. It's XCBC and then they donated it to the uh, uh, to the TV station here some years ago, don't know when. And once it got here, it spent I think most of its life not as a camcorder but as a security camera type thing this was mounted in the corner of the room and had a video cable attached to it and it, it just sat there uh, in the upper corner of the room near the ceiling just mounted there permanently turned on all the time and if we ever needed video footage of the control room for some reason this was in the control room we could switch to it during a broadcast or whatever. But that's how this thing lived up until a few days ago. It didn't have a, a videotape in it. It just sat turned on all the time providing a video feed. So while the unit itself has extremely high hours technically because it ran 24-7 for several years, the VCR portion actually has very low hours like a hundred and some hours which is fantastic that's really low hours um, so this thing works perfectly it's in beautiful shape for 17 years old and this is just a fantastic professional grade camcorder so there's a lot of things that make this camcorder special you can tell just by looking at it this ain't your old handy cam that's for sure speaking of which today's video is being filmed on one of my digital 8 camcorders but of course we will do a video recording test of this thing later so we can compare so this is a DV cam camcorder well what is DV cam well this camcorder actually records onto very common a very common tape format which a lot of you have probably seen before this thing takes mini DV tapes but this is not a mini DV camcorder it can record in the standard mini DV format but this can also record in the DV cam format which is slightly different DV cam differs from mini DV by running the tape faster as such, you have less chance of dropouts on the tape, which is kind of an issue in my experience with Mini DV. I've owned a Mini DV camcorder before. The first camcorder I ever used for this YouTube channel uh, was a Mini DV camcorder, and I had issues with the tapes wearing out and dropping out a lot after a few dozen re-records, whereas I have not had that issue with my Digital 8 camcorders. Hi8 and Digital 8 tapes uh, are a wider tape than Mini DV, and they're metal particle tapes, whereas Mini DV is metal evaporate. Metal evaporate videotape um, is good for archival. Once it's recorded onto, it does hold the signal better than metal particle tape, but metal evaporate tape is way less durable than metal particle tape. It does not handle being re-recorded on nearly as well. So once my mini DV camcorder that I used years ago for this channel finally broke and I sent it and all my mini DV tapes to V Westlife, I kind of swore off mini DV. I, I, I expected that I would never have another mini DV camcorder unless it was something really special like a Panasonic DVX100B or an HDV camcorder. HDV is a high definition format that uses mini DV tapes as 1080i. Well, this is an exception because this is one special camcorder. But yeah, DV cam. And the DV cam format is more than just mini DV. 
like Betacam, which has the small size tapes for camcorders, but then the big VHS size tapes for uh, studio VCRs, DV Cam has the same thing. There's actually three sizes of DV Cam tape called S for small, M for medium, and L for large. Mini DV tapes uh, are the S size tape, and they're only called Mini DV in the consumer world. In the professional world, with this camera, this is not called a Mini DV tape. This is called an S size DV cam tape. This one's branded Mini DV because it was meant for the consumer market. Um, there are separate DV cam branded tapes specifically for the professional market. Uh, are they any different? I don't know. Maybe the tape is of a higher grade in the DV cam specific tapes. But I think the majority of people who ever used camcorders like this that use the small size DV cam tapes, they just use mini DV tapes. They're a lot cheaper and easier to get. There's a bunch of mini DV tapes at the TV station and they are all just that, mini DV tapes. I've seen quite a few of them. I have yet to see an actual DV Cam S specific tape. But that's one cool thing about this camcorder is that it's actually DV Cam. So it runs the tape faster, recordings are more reliable, less susceptible to dropouts, and that's really important to me because that was a hang up I've always had about mini DV versus digital A. Second special thing about this camcorder, 3 CCD. What does that mean? Well, this thing, CCD is the image sensor. Every camcorder has one. Phones don't have them. Phones use CMOS sensors just because they're smaller, I guess, or cheaper or something. Pretty much every other camera, modern camera, since the mid-80s or so uses a CCD. But the real high-end professional stuff actually has three CCDs. There's three of them with a prism used such that when the light comes in through the lens it splits up, the prism splits it up into its separate red, green, and blue components and there is a dedicated CCD for each of red, green, and blue and that gets you way higher video quality. The reason for this is that when it comes to CCDs, CCDs are big, you know, not big, sometimes they're quite little, but it's a wafer arranged in pixels. But unlike an LCD display or some other flat panel display where there's three sub-pixels for each pixel, red, green, and blue, CCDs don't work that way. You can't have sub-pixels per pixel. So, in single CCD camcorders, like the one I'm filming with right now, each pixel of the CCD is assigned a color, a single color for that one pixel. The arrangement of color assignments to the pixels of a CCD is called a Bayer filter. And I believe it usually goes RGBG, so red, green, blue, green, red, green, blue, green. Twice as many greens as there are reds and blues. And yeah, each pixel of the CCD uh, has, has to have a color all to its own. So while the luminance component of the video, the luminance is the brightness information, and that's what gets you your black and white picture, the luminance information of a CCD can be entirely represented as that CCD's resolution, but the chrominance information, which is the color information, to go with that uh, image uh, is actually far less resolution than the CCD itself. If a CCD is say 640 by 480 pixels in a standard definition camcorder, then the actual color information is going to be only like a third of that. But with a 3 CCD camcorder with a dedicated CCD for each of the three primary colors, every single pixel of the image can have its own specific color because it's a sum of the red CCD, the green CCD, and the blue CCD. So you get full resolution color information, way sharper and more vibrant video. And the video out of this thing, I've already tested it, it's beautiful.
And yeah, 3CCD is the professional standard, the broadcast standard. This is a broadcast quality camera. As far as broadcast grade cameras and camcorders to go, this would be a cheap one, but it is a broadcast grade camera nonetheless. My, uh, my Panasonic SVHS camcorder, even though that's a professional grade camcorder, it's only a single CCD. So it's excellent for amateur work, but it's not what you'd call broadcast quality. But this is, and we'll see that later. So let's just uh, hook our peepers onto this thing from front to back. This thing has a wonderful lens on it, 12x zoom. And it's got a 52 millimeter thread on it with this attachment currently attached. Uh, this is a 0.7x wide converter, so this makes your lens more wide angle than it would be on its own. And that's great, because I definitely will be using this thing for at least some YouTube videos. And having this wide angle converter is, is going to be great. The wider, the better, because, you know, I have to get in here and show equipment that's sometimes really big. And sometimes i got to lean back here. So that'll make it nicer but it, it can unscrew here and this came this was standard equipment with the camcorder it's a Sony part model VCL HD 0758 and and that is a heavy it's made of metal it's all metal and glass it's very heavy it adds a lot of heft to the front of the camcorder when it's attached how should I set this down? I'm going to set it down on a soft surface. And there's what the camcorder looks like without that converter on there. Uh, not nearly as impressive. Uh, it definitely looks more pedestrian without that on there. But you'll want to take that converter off if you're doing, for example, uh, outdoor shots or just shots where you don't need a wide angle conversion and you want to get more zoom out of the thing, more telephoto. So there's that. It's an f1.6 lens. Oh, 58 millimeter lens thread. I think I accidentally said 52 originally. There's that. No thread on the uh, end of the wide angle, which is too bad. It would have been cool to put a huge lens hood on this thing, make this thing look even crazier, but then it'd probably be much more difficult to hold than it already is. Let's look at the microphone. Uh, I did not get this thing with a microphone. This would have come with a microphone, but it's not permanently attached. It was detached from this thing for whatever reason. Wow, we got a thunderstorm going on right now. Um, so I had to scrounge one up, and I was allowed to borrow this one from the station. This uh, poopy brown thing. It works. It sounds fine. As you can see, this has not a 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch jack, but an XLR connector for the microphones. Actually, got two XLRs, so you could have two mics or one stereo mic or a mic on the camcorder, and then the second one for a for a handheld mic, like you'd use in a news gathering situation. Really neat. Oh, something I uh, completely forgot to mention up to this point, but is rather significant. This camcorder is simply the professional version of the Sony DCR VX2000, a very, very, very famous amateur grade 3CCD camcorder. This camcorder and the VX2000 are uh, mostly the same. Uh, this one's just got uh, some more professional features on it. The VX2000 is mini DV only, no DV cam mode. It has a permanently attached microphone, no uh, XLR mic jacks. And uh, it's got a color viewfinder, whereas this has a black and white viewfinder because black and white viewfinders are considered uh, better in the broadcast industry because it's easier to focus with them. Um, but yeah, this is just a professional up VX2000, which is a very famous camcorder, particularly with one group of people, skateboarders. I don't know why, but the Sony VX2000 
and its successor the VX2100 and its predecessor the VX1000 they are extremely popular with skateboarders or they were in their time I don't know if they are anymore given we've moved on to high definition but yeah strange but anyway this is based on the VX2000 so uh, you know right there that it's got to be an excellent camcorder because the VX2000 is famous um, so yeah that's the microphone situation it attaches with this grip and I put some scotch double-sided tape there to make it thick enough to fit in the grip but it just goes in the grip there and uh, you just screw it in and there's your mic so it's neat because you have a choice of mics that you could put in here I tried my Audio-Technica AT9100 which is, uh, here it is which is this guy I had high hopes for it because this is a really great omnidirectional microphone but unfortunately it doesn't work presumably because it's a dynamic microphone whereas this thing expects a condenser microphone so the output on this thing is I guess so low that you couldn't even hear it even with the gain turned up all the way so this is useless for this camcorder unfortunately but this condenser mic's working pretty well I can pull the poopy brown sock off it and here's what it looks like. So that's the microphone situation. You got a bunch of microphone controls up here. Uh, you can choose if it's recording channel 1 and channel 2 or channel 1 only. You can choose for each channel whether it's indeed a microphone or if it's a line level input. So that's great that you can use the XLR jacks for line level input. Or you can set it to be a microphone but attenuated. If the microphone's really hot you can attenuate it by 20 dB. Too bad there's no amplification function. And you get 48 volt phantom power so if your microphone requires 48 volt phantom power this one happens to require 48 volts then uh, you can turn that on too. Very very nice. Um, you might have noticed when we glanced at this side of the camcorder you've got this very bulbous square shaped thing in there. That's where the uh, optical image stabilizer is. Now we have this switch that says ND filter. ND means neutral density. So this has a neutral density filter which professional cameras tend to have or if they don't have them built in you can buy separate neutral density filters to put on the uh, to put on the front of the lens. Um, it's basically a brownish color filter whose purpose is to make everything darker so that when you're outside in the bright sun or if you're under super bright studio lighting or stadium lighting you don't have to worry about blowing out the image because it's too bright just turn this thing on there's two levels of neutral density filter or you can just leave it off if you're indoors or in darker situations and this thing will actually tell you uh, what it recommends to put it on. If you go outdoors and it's really bright, uh, it'll pop up on the screen. It'll say ND1 or ND2. And if you're indoors and accidentally have the filter turned on, it'll say ND off, meaning turn the filter off. You don't need it. And it's good in creative situations too. Like for example, let's say you're outside in the sun and you want to get a portrait shot where your subjects in focus but the background is blurred well to do that you need a wide open aperture but you might not be able to have a wide open aperture when it's really bright out well you can turn the neutral density filter on and then you might be able to get away with a wide open aperture without blowing out the image very nice professional feature there you can record index marks on the tape uh, to make it easy to fast forward or rewind to those parts of the tape later. You have a focus switch, auto, manual, or you can force it to infinity focus, I guess if you uh, if you were taking video of, I don't know, Uranus. Uranus is infinite, I suppose. <laughs> There's also this little button down here, push auto, so if you're in manual focus mode, you can push that button for it to focus for you, but then it'll lock on to that focus. A nice feature. This button if you want to adjust the uh, aperture or the iris as it's called here and then you get a little 
thumb wheel to open or close your aperture. There's two rings on the lens barrel here. This one is to zoom in and out. And this one is for focus when you're on manual focus. Very nice. You've got controls down here. Fader, backlight, or spotlight. Here's your color LCD monitor. It's got an auxiliary info panel right there. It's a very basic one com compared to consumer handy cams. It's just got a tape counter and a battery meter. We can open it. And this, this is the nicest monitor I've ever seen on a camcorder. It's metal. In fact, this whole half of the body of the camcorder is made of metal. It's so nice and very heavy. But uh, there's your monitor. It's got volume and brightness controls. We've got all these inside uh, the panel here. Mostly the same as a handy cam. A couple of professional oriented buttons here. Got a couple of uh, edit controls up here. The viewfinder can pivot up and down. Doesn't extend though. And it's got this rather large eye cup on it. It's got your diopter right there. And we've got some buttons on the back. There's your switch to go between auto mode a manual mode and then a manual hold mode. When you're in the manual mode you can adjust gain shutter speed, white balance, auto exposure shift. This button brings up some audio level meters so you can see what the audio levels are coming in both your XLR jacks. Very nice. General purpose scroll wheel which also pushes in just like a handy cam. Got a memory stick slot. You can stick a memory stick in there and take super low quality VGA resolution still photos. <laughs> You've got your DC input jack. This uses the same AC adapter as any Sony Handycam of the era. And I did get a charger with this thing, so I've got like three or four of the Sony chargers now that will fit all of my Handycams and this. There's your battery compartment. This thing takes an Infolithium L-Series battery, which is excellent because I have a few of them. Let's see if I can uh, get it out here. This is an aftermarket battery, one of my better ones. And it just slots in there like any handy cam. And you may notice that it's quite deep in there. There's a lot of open space here, and that's because this thing has been designed to elegantly handle the largest Infolithium L-Series battery, the NPF970. A huge chungus of a battery that's like that thick, 6.6 .6 amp hours. Uh, I don't know if Sony makes them anymore, but a company called Neewer, um, which makes a lot of equipment for the broadcast environment, we have some Neewer stuff um, at the TV station. They sell their own copy of the F970 battery, six and a half amp hours, and it's only 35 bucks Canadian. That's a wonderful deal. So if I ever need a, uh, a battery to fit this thing or my Hi8 camcorder, which could also fit that size battery, I know what to get. My Sony Mavicas uh, can only take the smaller batteries, but Newer makes those too, so that's really nice. There's your power switch. Just like any handy cam, we have off, VCR mode, camera mode, and memory stick camera mode. You have a little lock there to lock it out of uh, memory stick mode. Turned it on here. You just heard this thing go ding. This thing behaves like any handy cam. It's not at all intimidating to use. It works 90% like the most pedestrian handy cam. Um, it's it's really really nice if you've ever used a handy cam this thing is going to be very very familiar to you the user interface is 90 percent the same got your battery meter your tape counter this shows that we're in dv cam mode and of course your red button there starts and stops recording your tape eject button right there your still photo button and your power zoom control there's an auxiliary record start stop button, which is nice to have. And we've got some rubber panels here. This one hides the headphone jack and the uh, LANK remote jack. 
this one hides your I.O. You get S-Video, Composite, and Firewire, of course, being a DV camcorder. Very nice. And I believe you can also use this camcorder, like the Digital Aid Handycams, you can use this thing to record something from one of those sources onto the DV cam tape, which is a nice little nifty feature. Your VCR controls show up here when you're in VCR mode. Got a nice handle, which I like. There's your tape transport controls, very nice. Even though this thing's from 2003, these controls and the way they light up orange, that's sort of reminiscent of the late 90s handy cams. So that's cool. You've got a hot shoe up here. Uh, is it a hot shoe? Uh, no, it might not be a hot shoe. So a normal passive accessory shoe. And I think we've covered the uh, gamut of the thing. There's a tripod mount with locator pin. There's your info sticker. This was made in Japan. Date code 3B, uh, so second quarter of 2003. Very, very nice piece of equipment. I'm really happy to uh, get to have this. We'll turn the unit on here again. I'll show you the little info panel. There it is. There, battery's getting quite low. And uh, we'll open the menu here. And aside from some professional oriented settings, like the time code, and a few other things. It's mostly the same as a uh, as a Handycam. Oh, CM, that's interesting. CM stands for cassette memory. So some DV cam cassettes have a little chip inside them that has 16 kilobytes of flash memory or static RAM or whatever. And that cassette memory can store index marks and other information like titles and stuff so you put a cassette in that has the cassette memory and the camcorder can read all the information that's stored on that on that memory chip and configure itself appropriately that's kind of cool here's where you set your recording mode either dv cam or normal mini dv mode in the normal mini dv mode you only have sp speed you don't have lp I forget if I mentioned this, but because DV cam runs the tape faster, uh, your recording time is reduced from 60 minutes for a 60 minute tape on mini DV to 40 minutes for DV cam. The recording time is cut by a third. You can choose your uh, audio quality, either 48 kilohertz or 32 kilohertz. If you choose 48 kilohertz, you won't have the ability to uh, to dub audio into a recording. There's either two channels of 48 kilohertz audio or four channels of 32 kilohertz. Oh, this thing can uh, output color bars too, which is pretty cool. Again, not SMPTE bars, which is too bad, but better than nothing. So that's a cool, cool way if you have like a another device hooked up to the video output of this thing and just need to check it. Here's our hours meter. So these are all multiplied by 10. So total runtime 25,000 hours because of course this thing was turned on 24-7 for years. But look at the rest of the hours. The head drum 170. Tape 100 and only 650 threads. That's really low use for for a professional camcorder. Really nice. And that's about it. So how's about we go for the real test now. We're gonna start filming with this thing. I will put my faithful old Digital 8 Handycam down, pick this guy up, 
and let's see what the video quality is like out of that free CCD imaging system. I'm really excited. Here we go. We are now recording on the Sony model DSR PD150 DV cam camcorder from 2003. Professional sibling to the famous DCR VX2000. Free CCD. And I don't know about you guys, but I think I can tell already just in the viewfinder here, the light sensitivity is way better in this camcorder. From the monitor in my Digital 8 unit here, things have looked kind of dark. So I apologize if the whole video has been dark until up to this point. But here we are! 3 CCD! This is what it looks like. And I, I hope it looks beautiful. It certainly looks beautiful in the monitor here. Um, really fantastic imaging setup in this camera. Uh, I can use the zoom ring here. Like that. Our uh, neutral density filter. There's the first level neutral density filter. And there's the second level. Look at the colors. A 3CCD system is so much better at uh, picking up colors. That is so beautiful. So yeah, that's about it. The light sensitivity looks excellent. The colors look beautiful. And uh, I bet this thing makes awesome, awesome video quality. I will definitely be using this as a camcorder for at least some of my YouTube videos. This is just awesome. Way better quality than this, as much as I love my digital eight camcorders. But I'm thinking now, Going around inside my apartment where it's not the brightest lit doesn't do this camcorder justice. I live in a town full of beautiful things outdoors, and so I say let's take this camcorder outdoors and give it a real run for its money and see what this thing can do.
And that, my friends, is the Sony DSR-PD150 DV cam camcorder from 2003. What a beautiful piece of equipment. A professional 3 CCD camcorder that doesn't scare you with a crazy amount of switches for professional features that the layman would never use. But very nicely featured. Really good quality. And I'm really glad that uh, I got a hold of this one. I consider myself very lucky for that. And I can't wait to start using this thing. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.